Hey, welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to talk about the horizontal and vertical components of force or resolving force into its horizontal and vertical components. And to start the video off, I want to go over a scenario. So let's say an object is being pulled with the force of 100 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So if we draw a picture of this scenario, so let's say that this is the ground here. And let's say we have some kind of object on the ground, could be whatever, maybe a box, a sled, and it's being pulled at a force of 100 newtons. So maybe this is like a rope or a string attached to this object. And this force is making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So what that means is if we draw just a horizontal line here, that is parallel to the ground, basically that is going to be 30 degrees. So notice that we here are given the resultant. And what we can do is we can break down this resultant vector of 100 newtons into components. And more specifically in this video, we're going to break it down into horizontal and vertical components. So it's kind of like going backwards from what we were doing before. Because before, or up to this point rather, what's been happening is we've been getting components and then we've been adding all of the component vectors and getting the resultants. Right? Well, in this case, what's happening is we are getting the resultant and we're breaking down this resultant into the component vectors. Right? Or resolving the resultant into the components. That's another word you might see come up, resolving a vector. So, if we take this result and break it down into its components, it's like taking a horizontal vector plus a vertical vector, like that. So let's call this vector maybe x. That would be our horizontal component. And then let's call this uh, vertical vector y. Now notice that this here is a right angle triangle. So we can actually figure out what's the magnitude of this vector, what's the magnitude of that vector using SOHCAHTOA. So starting with vector x, we know that cos of 30 is what? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's gonna be the magnitude of x over 100 newtons. And then we know cos of 30 is basically root 3 over 2. So if we cross multiply and we isolate for the magnitude of that vector x, we'll basically have uh, 100 times root 3 over 2. And then 100 over 2, that's basically, I'm just going to erase this here, it's basically 50 root 3. And this is a force. So this is the horizontal force, so that is measured in newtons. Right, and we can also solve for that vertical component, that vertical force. So notice that sine of 30 equals the magnitude of y over 100 newtons. Sine 30, we know it's a half, and when we cross multiply, basically the um, magnitude of y is going to be 50 newtons. So these numbers here represent the horizontal force and the vertical force acting on this object to give us a resultant of 100 newtons. And then this here, if you wanted to get it in decimals, I think it'd be like around 87. Newton. So what these numbers mean here is that 
the force, 100 newtons acting at 30 degrees to the horizontal, pulling on this object, it's the same as if we had two different forces acting on this object, pushing the object horizontally at 87 newtons and then pushing the object up at 50 newtons, right? So writing this down, 100 newtons at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So that's causing one effect. Well, that's the exact same as pushing the object or pulling the object horizontally at 87 newtons and pushing the object up vertically. at 50 newtons. Right? So if you had two forces like this acting on this object, the movement of this object would be exactly the same as if there was another force, 100 newtons, pulling this object at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So both of these are basically equal. So what we did is we took the resultant, remember this was the resultant, and broke it down into two components. Because notice when we add these two components, when we add these two vectors, we end up getting that resultant vector, right? So as I mentioned before, up to this point, usually what's happening is we are getting these vectors. So then we have to add them, find the resultant. In this case, we are given the resultant and we have to find those components. Now, another thing I wanna mention before ending this video is equilibrium forces. Now, if you remember the equilibrium vector, it's basically a vector that is the opposite direction of the resultant, but has the same magnitude. So if we had another force acting on this object this way, and the magnitude of that force was 100 newtons, right, the opposite way of the resultant, then this object would not move. Now, what about equilibrium forces on these components? What would happen then? Well, sort of neat, so this force here is 87 newtons. What if we had, what if we added another equilibrium force acting this way at 87 newtons as well? Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna neutralize that horizontal component of 87 newtons. So when you add those two vectors, that would just neutralize to zero. And what's gonna be left? Well, just this vertical component. So what's actually going to happen then is that this object is going to move vertically at a force of 50 newtons because we took away that horizontal component. We neutralized it with an equilibrium vector, an equilibrium horizontal vector. Now, what about the opposite case? What if we neutralize the y vector? So the vertical vector, which is 50 newtons. So in addition to these two or this resultant, what if we added another vector that's exactly the opposite direction, so pointing downward of this vertical vector and the same magnitude of 50 newtons? Well, notice then that these two forces will be neutralized. And so the object is just gonna move horizontally at 87 newtons, right? Because those two forces are gone, right? So you can actually add equilibrium vectors to components, and then what's gonna be left is just the other component, unless you add two equilibrium vectors to both components, so to the vertical component, then to the horizontal component, what's gonna happen then? Then the object's just not gonna move at all. Because if we add these two vectors, then we end up getting that equilibrium vector to the resultant, right? And we mentioned before, if we have an equilibrium vector to the resultant, what's happening is the object is not moving.
right? So just be careful with potential maybe like communication questions that can come up on your tests. If they're asking you, um, what if you add, for example, a vector 87 newtons in the opposite direction to these vectors here? Well, then you're just going to be left with 50 newtons going up. Or if you neutralize this 50 newton vector with a vector going down, all that's going to be left is this 87 newton vector, and that's going to be pushing the object horizontally at a force of 87 newton.